I am Ten Squatawa, the teller of stories. Gather around the council fire and listen well. Today I tell the story of how the Great Spirit gave to the Indian the gift of corn. This tale comes from the Ojibwe people, who are called the Chippewa by some. In the days before the great chief Nanawangabe, the people worked hard on the shores of the great water. The men fished from great canoes and hunted in the forest. The women gathered nuts, wild fruits, and berries that their children would have food to eat. The children too worked, but there was always time for play. Even in their games, the young boys built skills that they would use when the time came for them to take their places as warriors of the tribe. For Wunsa, the time of childhood was coming to an end. He would soon be old enough to become a warrior. Each night he prayed in his heart that he would be a great hunter and a brave fighter so that his mother and father would be proud of him. Great spirit, soon I will come to you to be given my vision of manhood. Hear my prayer and grant that I may be the bravest of the Ojibwe warriors and the strongest of our hunters so that I may bring honor to you and to my father's lodge. The time when Wunsa would become a warrior drew closer, and his mother and father prepared the gifts which would be given to Wunsa on that special day when he prepared to receive his vision from the Great Spirit. Wunsa had already chosen the place where he would build his spirit lodge. Here he would fast and wait for the vision which came to all Indian youths before they became warriors. You have chosen well, my son. This is a sacred place. I will build my lodge quickly, father. As Wunsa worked, the younger boys watched and learned from him, just as he had done when he was a young boy. See, my friends, how the lodge is made. It must be perfect in every way to receive the messenger the Great Spirit sends to each warrior as he fasts inside his own spirit lodge. Well, I don't... Yeah. It make, I don't think that's... Sure. Should, well, you see what he did over there? I sure did. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you think it's right? He's going to do a good uh, job. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Hope so. It is finished. I am now ready for the ceremony to begin. I know that the Great Spirit will send me a mighty vision. The boy returned to his village and told his family that he was ready to begin. Wunza. You are old enough to become a warrior. Before we accept you, you must stay alone in your spirit lodge for five days. You will eat no food, but you may drink water twice each day. If you are worthy, the Great Spirit will send you a vision. This will be powerful medicine in your life. Before sundown, Wunsa bathed in the lake put on his new vest made by his mother and the moccasins made by his father. And then the entire village followed him as he went to his spirit lodge to begin his five days of fasting. Wunsa's heart beat louder than the festival drum. Remember, Wunsa, one drink in the morning and one at night. You must pledge this on your honor. If you fail, you will bring dishonor to your family, your people, and yourself. I know I will be proud of you, Wunsa, my son. I promise you, father, that I will not fail you. Wunsa was filled with excitement. When he closed his eyes in sleep, he dreamed of his happy days of childhood. He was happy, and he knew that if he kept his pledge, the vision would appear. During the day, Wunsa gathered wood for his fire. He stopped to enjoy the beauty of the plants and flowers and to watch the animals of the forest. He watched with wonder the birds of the sky as they soared over his head and nested in the tall green tree. He saw the berries which were so good to eat and the mysterious herbs which could cure so many sicknesses. 
As he looked at the many wonders of the forest, he thought of the one who had provided all things. The great spirit is all-powerful. I have seen with my own eyes all the gifts that he has given my people. In his greatness, could he not make it easier for his people to get their food? Often the hunters and the fishermen return empty-handed, and even the berries of the forest do not always grow. As Wunsa slept the second night, no vision came to him. Instead, his dreams were of the wonders of the forest which the Great Spirit had provided. On the third day, the boy did not even take the water which he was allowed. On the third night, when Wunza was weakened from hunger and thirst, his vision came to him. A tall, bronzed brave descended from the sky. His garments were brightly colored in yellow and green. In his hair, he wore tall green plumes. He moved as a proud and powerful warrior. Awake, young warrior, to hear the message of the great spirit who has sent me. He knows of your desire to help your people. You must do battle with me, and if you are able to defeat me, I will teach you a wonderful secret. Wunsa, weak from his fast, rose up and struggled with the powerful stranger who had come to him. The boy's courage was great, but his strength could not match the strength of this magnificent warrior. At last! It is finished. You have defeated me. I am disgraced. Not so, young warrior. It is not finished. Tomorrow I will come to you again, and we will match our strength once more. The warrior vanished as he had come, and once slept. I come again, young warrior. Are you prepared to wrestle with me? I am even weaker than before, but I am not afraid. Once more, Wunsa struggled with the stranger, and again he was defeated. You have a brave heart and great courage, young warrior. Tomorrow I will come to you for the last time. That will be your final trial. Wunsa was ashamed of his weakness, and in his heart he prayed to the Great Spirit for strength. I have grown much weaker, but I will accept your challenge this last time. It may be that you will take my life. If that is to be, I pray that my father will know that I died as a warrior. With a mighty war cry, Wunza fell on the warrior, and their final battle began. For a long time they battled, and finally the boy Wunza was able to overpower his visitor. Well done, young warrior. Now hear me. I must come to you one more time. We will meet in combat once again you may be certain that you will be victorious, and then the wonderful secret will be yours. Wunsa was troubled. The time of his fast was over, and he should be returning to his village. Come, my son. The people are waiting to hear of your vision. Father, I cannot leave the lodge. I must stay one more day. Allow me one more day to fast. My vision is not yet finished. It was not usual for a boy to prolong his stay in the spirit lodge, but Wunza's father had trust in his son. The shaman, too, knew that Wunza was an exceptional boy and gave the boy permission to stay. In his lodge, Wunza waited. It is time, Wunza, for your final victory. Promise that you will do me the honor befitting a slain warrior. I promise. When I am dead, strip off my garments and place me in a clean patch of soil. Clean the place of all weeds and brambles. 
when I am buried, come to visit my grave often. The battle raged for a long time. But in the end, the spirit warrior was overcome by Wunsa's newly found strength. The boy was strangely troubled. He rejoiced in his victory, and he mourned the death of his brave friend. Mighty warrior, I do not know your name, but I will honor your bravery. As he had been told, Wunsa stripped the warrior of his yellow and green garments. He prepared a grave and placed the fallen warrior in it. Then he raised his arms to the sky. Great spirit, this mighty warrior returns to you. On his resting place, I shed the last tears of my childhood. The warrior Wunsa returned to his people and a great feast was held. He recounted his vision and waited for the wise men of the village to tell him its meaning. But they could not agree. One said that it meant he would be a mighty warrior. Another said it meant that he would be a shaman. None could agree on the vision's meaning. Wunsa did not forget his promise to his friend. He came frequently to the grave and tended the ground carefully. He pulled up the wild grass and brought water from the lake to keep the rich brown earth soft and moist. As time passed, Wunsa took his place as a mighty hunter, and the people sang his praises and his fame spread far and wide. But the young warrior continued to tend his friend's grave, and one day... He was amazed to find that a row of plants had sprung from the earth. Wunso recognized the plants as the plumes the warrior had worn. As the days passed and the summer moon was going away, the plants grew as tall and as strong as the spirit warrior had been. Soon there appeared sweet and golden ears of corn on the waving green stalks. What is this wonder, my son? This is the goodness of the Great Spirit, Father. No longer must we live only by hunting and fishing. I prayed for a way to feed my people, and the Great Spirit has sent us corn. Great Spirit, behold, we offer you the first of the corn you have given us. We thank you for your kindness. We honor the memory of your great warrior, Mondorman, who gave his life that we might live. And so the Ojibwe people to this day tell the story of Mondorman, the corn warrior, and how he came to a boy of the Ojibwe's and brought him the gift of corn from the great spirit who cares for all his children. <laughs> 